This essay is narration. A narration tells a story. It's actually probably one of the essay forms you're very familiar with because you've read lots of narrations. The goal of a narration is to make a point, but not to make an argumentation or to try to convince someone through just giving the main points or the main evidence. Rather, narration kind of tells a story in a way that makes your point. Let's take a look at how to write a narration essay. In a narration essay, we want to go ahead and make sure that we know what's the point that we're trying to make, but then cover it in a kind of story we're going to tell. And because the story is from your perspective rather than just evidence, you can often use pronouns like I. So you're talking about me, first person perspective. Now, you don't have to use first person perspective. You could use a, second, a third person perspective. You could use different ways to tell your narration. You could jump around from different people's perspective, first person, third person. But in any case, it's somebody telling what they've seen or what they've done. In a narration, you will usually begin with an introductory paragraph. And an introductory paragraph will set the scene, like what is this, where is this, what's happening. Maybe an event is taking place, like a concert or a party, or maybe it's in the morning or in the night, maybe it's inside, indoors or outdoors. Usually a narration will give the feeling of a personal experience. Now when you write your narration, probably you will tell something that you've done, that you've experienced. That's because you know it. It's hard, very hard, to make a narration about something you haven't done because you don't know all of the information. You don't know the feelings or the set the scene right. That's why writers work hard to be writers, uh, fiction writers. It's not an easy thing to do. So in your case, I suggest that you write about something you've experienced or at least in some way know something about. Next, we're going to go into the body paragraphs. And in the body, each paragraph will basically expand on more details of what's happened in this story. So deeper and deeper on the details. Now, if you go read a story, even a short story, I would highly suggest you read some English short stories. You can just go on the internet and do a search for famous English short stories. And what you'll find in narration is it's the detail that writers really spend time in their sentences on. So you learn things as you're reading about how tall the character is, or they see someone, how tall they are, or how heavy they are, or what the color of their hair is, or the kind of clothes they're wearing. And what that, what that does is it gives you a signal about what kind of person that is. So rather than the writer just saying, this person is a lazy person, they'll say something like their, their tie is not tied correctly, their belt is not in correctly, their shirt is not tucked in correctly, their hair is a mess all over the place. And that gives you a picture, draws a picture of that person I'm seeing in my story, what kind of person they are. I may see another person and I say they're dressed very, very tidily. They have everything set in just the right place. The hair is fixed just correctly. And that gives me a feeling of this person is very fastidious. They pay attention to detail. Now I could just say, I saw a person who pays attention to detail. But then the reader would read that and say, how do you know that? Where did that come from? What's that all about? So you want to convey information through telling details in the story. And that's a little bit difficult because it's the details that matter. Okay, so each paragraph can basically go off into these different details. Now, in this kind of narration, as you tell those details, you may end up with some very short paragraphs. That's okay. Uh, you could combine things into one longer paragraph, but very often in narration, we see short paragraphs because it's just a few sentences sometimes to describe something and then jump to another description. And usually a paragraph, remember, is kind of one overall 
topic area, making an overall point. So I may describe, I walked into the room and saw a tall man. That may be one paragraph. Next to him was a, a short little girl. That's another paragraph. On the other side of the room was a woman, apparently her mother, you know, and that's another paragraph. So each paragraph can be very short, and I think that's quite normal. In the end, the concluding paragraph, you're going to try to summarize the experience or what's something that came out of this. So you're telling a story and then you want to kind of sum it up. And remember, because it's a narration, it's a personal experience, you can just come out and say something like, after this was done, I felt. Right? And now that I look back on it, I think. You can say things like that. And you would not say those in an argumentation trying to convince someone. But in a narration, it's very personal. So you're not responsible to prove the facts or support the facts. Rather, what you're doing is telling us what you think and what you feel. And that's perfectly acceptable in a narration. <laughs>